sometimes starts with tingling or numbness. There's often blurred vision and coordination issues. And then the diagnosis, multiple sclerosis, a neurodegenerative disease that impacts more than 2 million people worldwide. And the best doctors can, and all the best doctors can do is prescribe drugs to help manage its symptoms and slow its progression. Some of the biggest names in biomedical research are competing to develop better treatments, including Genzyme, Novartis, and Biogen IDEC, all in Kendall Square. And this week, many of them are attending MS Boston 2014, a global conference to showcase the latest advancements. My next guest is hoping a breakthrough isn't far off. Gigi Rano was diagnosed with MS in 1998 and has not found an effective drug or treatment plan. We're also joined by Francisco Quantana. He's a researcher at Brigham and Women's Center for Neurologic Diseases. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So for people who aren't familiar with this, Gigi, just tell us how, what happened to you? How did you start feeling when, before the diagnosis? I was, um, I was dancing on a Saturday night, which I loved to do. I was 26. Um, I was at a club. I was shimmying down. And I didn't, I wasn't drinking that night, and I don't take drugs. And I felt a tingling down my spinal column. And I knew that that was not right. I was, I'm very athletic. And so I knew that didn't feel right. So I went to the doctors and they suggested I went to a um, physical therapist. And so I did all the physical therapy and it still didn't fix anything. Mm. I would go to sleep at night and I would have a tingling in my right thigh from my knee to my thigh and I thought, hmm. And then they called me back and said, how are you doing? And I thought, oh, isn't that sweet? And I said, well, it's still there. And they said, well, why don't you go to a neurologist? Which I did. And I went through a couple of tests, including an evoked stimulus response. I don't even remember what they all were, but they were negative. And then um, my neurologist said, well, if we give you a lumbar puncture, you know, that will be next. And I said, really, will that tell you how to fix whatever I have? And she said, no, but it will tell us if you have it. And I had heard some things about lumbar mm -hmm. punctures, and I said, no, that's OK. And so then she said, OK, I'll do an MRI. And that's when they found the lesions. But I thought I missed a meeting because when I went to her next, she said, hey, good news, you don't have brain tumor. Oh. And I didn't know that was an option. But did she tell you then that you had MS? I did. She said, oh. I have the disease, so, it's MS. I'd never heard of it before. Really? Of course, wow. I burst, in, burst into young. tears. Yeah. It was actually 89. Oh, so you were young. And uh, 26. So, and I just want to ask Fran, so what is this exactly? We have a couple of uh, pictures of nerves, a, a damaged one and a, a good one. What is happening? So it's uh, a disorder Gigi? where the immune system, instead of fighting off pathogens and microbes, starts to attack the central nervous system. And that results in, in neurological symptoms, like the ones associated, mm -hmm. like, like the ones you were describing. So it's breaking down this myelin exactly. right around Exactly. So what happens is the immune system specifically attacks the myelin that wraps the axons, and the axons are very important parts of neurons needed for us to perform all the functions we perform. So when, that, when those axons are uh, attacked by the immune system, then you start to have mm -hmm. these neurological symptoms. Well, now, did you, I'm sure you know many people in the MS community. I mean, Anne Romney says she's been improved by certain therapies and maybe certain drugs, but nothing has really worked for you. No, I tried, um, you know, the injectables w initially. Mm. The very first drug, um, it wasn't sure that it would work. Now, of course, when you get diagnosed, it's so important to get out of therapy right away to stop the progression. Mm. But when I was, uh, you know, in 89, they were like, well, you could, you couldn't. And I thought, well, I don't want to take a shot every day. So I didn't. Mm. And I was still playing racquetball and golf really? and tennis and running and work. Yeah working 65 hours a week. I was 26. Um, and then all of a sudden I started walking like I was drunk, mm -hmm. hugging walls. It was slowing down, using a cane, um, which I could only kick when I went on oral steroids. Um, anyway, until finally I took Copaxone, which was a daily subcutaneous for at least 10 years, which was fine. But then I broke through that. Finally, my neurologist suggested I go on Celsept, which is a oral medication that people don't take usually unless they've had an organ transplant, mm. just to stop the progression. Wow. 
So, Brent, tell us what this, we hope, is going to come out of this um, big conference here. Down, I think it's at the Heinz, isn't it? Um, there's going to be a $30 million award granted to maybe you, <laughs> researchers, um, to do what? I think because what we are facing now is probably what's the next challenge in multiple sclerosis. For years, the main challenge was to develop drugs for the relapsing remitting phases of the disease, which is the type of disease by which, with which most of patients will start. However, eventually many patients will turn into the, what we call secondary progressive MS, where the protective effects, the beneficial effects of these drugs are not that strong. And that's actually what is reflecting is that the disease probably or the mechanisms driving the disease are changing. So what we need to do now, the biggest challenge now in multiple sclerosis is to identify what is going wrong in this progressive stage of mm -hmm. the disease. We have to identify what's wrong there, what are the cells we should to investigate, and what are the targets okay. we, can, we can address there. Is there any hope of reversing? I mean, can you repair the nerve damage? That's actually another set of uh, therapies that are being developed, which is actually not only to identify what's wrong, but actually to repair, fix yeah. to <laughs> fix. And, that, uh, and, and there are many of those studies underway. Are you hopeful, Gigi? Okay, that's a very, very exciting statement you just gave. For so long, I broke through so many um, medications, but after hearing about this conference, I am, I, I dare to hope again. I hope so. All right, Gigi Rano and Juan Quintana, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.